Hi everyone, welcome, or maybe welcome back, to Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. In this video, I'm going to be playing Scenario 4. Now, the How to Play guide runs you through the first five scenarios and gradually builds up the new elements of the game. Scenario 4 has got most of the new elements in it. We've got all of our level 1 cards. We haven't got our X cards yet that are kind of maybe a bit more complicated, a bit more situational. So whether you are an experienced Gloomhaven player that would just like to see one of the new scenarios and you know, get a good feel for the, the decks of these new classes. Or maybe you've come over from the scenario one playthrough and you wanted to see more. Welcome, let's get into it. So just briefly, if you are coming over from scenario four, some things that we've got now, the item shop in Gloomhaven opened. As we earned gold through scenarios, we were able to spend it on items. I've got myself a stamina potion that lets me get some cards back and a shield that's hopefully going to protect me from some damage. And Marty as the demolitionist has got a healing potion to get some health back and a poison dagger which can turn an attack into poison, which is one of the status conditions you can inflict and make enemies take more damage. You'll notice there's now money and treasure lying around on the floor, which we can use loot actions to gather up, or if you if you end your movement on one, you'll get it as well. There are traps strewn about. Anyone treading on a trap will take three damage. That's why the damage token is on them. Enemies won't walk onto traps unless it's their only choice, but they can be pushed and pulled on there. Purple terrain is difficult terrain, costs you two movement to move into those. We have some different enemy types, the Stone Golem and the Zealot. And they've got some bonuses on them. Stone Golems are shielded and have tons of health. And Elite Zealots can wound with their attacks, which makes you take some damage every turn. Also, at the end of Scenario 3, event cards got introduced. Every time you successfully complete a scenario, you get to read a city event that will give you a story and then a couple of options. And based on your options, you'll have a little bit more story and a result. That changes from Gloomhaven, where we normally got them before we did scenarios. But anyway, these elements were introduced in those other couple of scenarios. New for this scenario is the element board. We've got cards that will put elements out there and other cards that will consume those elements to give us more powerful effects. We've got battle goals. Each player gets dealt two at the start of the game and picks one. And completing these, there's a secret. Successfully completing them will give you ticks. Every three ticks that you get will give you a perk, which is a way to change your... Well, not always, but mostly used to change your attack modifier deck. I have got Recluse. I want to never end my turn adjacent to any allies. And Marty has got Ravager. He wants to perform two actions with lost icons in the same turn. We did get a perk as a reward for Scenario 3, and they are in our decks now. Uh, Demolitionist removed two minus ones, and I replaced a zero with a plus two muddle card. But anyway, let's properly get into the game now. As always, turn on Klingon subtitles. If I've made any mistakes, they will most likely be noted up there. And there is a handheld camera and a static camera option. You know, it's going to change to handheld now, potentially. Quick, get to the description and you can change to the one that you would like there. So let's get going. So here we have a ritual in stone. Our goal is to destroy all the summoning stones. So these gold borders here show objective tiles. So the, the gold borders in this scenario represent the summoning stones. They have hit points. It tells us in the special rules they have the number of characters plus one hit points. So three hit points because there are two of us. And I won't go into the story and stuff because we, you know, we haven't seen two and three and stuff. I don't want to spoil too much of it. But uh, it's, it's enough to say that we found ourselves in this room and this summoning ritual that these zealots are doing is making this place cave in on itself uh, for whatever nefarious purposes they are doing this for. And so we need to stop this or we're going to be crushed along with everything else. So it's our job to take down these summoning stones. Another thing the special rules tell us is once two of the summoning stones have been destroyed, we stop and read some things. It's going to be enemies spawning. Spoilers. Oh, another new thing, actually, is the supplemental scenario book. You might notice that you know, I said all of the things take place in the scenario book. Sometimes it's just text. Sometimes it's pieces of map as well are added to this to have, uh, have bigger scenarios. So this just slots into the bottom here, and it's one great big room. So let's go then. We have a summoning stone right here. We have a zealot standing right by it. I think that needs to be our first priority. So, yeah, let's get to it. So... 
you know, I've got all of my 10 level 1 cards now, and, you know, if, you, if you're coming straight from the Scenario 1 playthrough, we saw them a couple of them level up at the end of that scenario, but now this is, you know, your full deck. You do get a few more optional cards, and as your character levels up in the future, they will get more and more choice of cards. But this is, you know, how, how you would have started in uh, Gloomhaven or Frosthaven, the, the full uh, Gloomhaven, that is. Uh, so I won't kind of go through them one by one, but we will see them all as they come out. So what would I like to do then? Now, the summoning stones need to be melee attacked. And as a person who likes to throw a lot of axes around, that's not ideal for me. I do have this close cuts, though. Now, this card will, it, whenever you see this shape, I am the grey. The hatchet is the grey and the enemies are the red. So we need to be standing in this formation. I can do attack three to two enemies then and get an experience. I'm thinking, what if I can run over to here? So I would need one movement, two, three, because this is difficult terrain. And I could attack both of these straight away. So I only need three movements. And what if now power pitch here is great for, you know, attack six at range three and two XP. But once I do that, I've lost this card and you don't want to lose uh, too many cards too quickly. So I think that that's reasonably fast as well, 25 for my initiative number. I think I am going to grab both of these and they're going to be my two cards. I'm going to try and walk over there and attack the Zealot and the Summoning Stone. Over to Marty then. Now Marty doesn't know anything about my idea of not ending turns next to allies. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I just hope that he has something else in mind. So he can see the same thing. I can say that I'm going over there and trying to sort out those two. Zealots do have six health, though, so there's no saying that I'll be able to take out the Zealot in one big hit. Maybe Marty can make his way over to a different place. We don't necessarily want to be too far away from each other. But let's look at Marty's range. So he's got Explosive Blitz and Attack 2 at range 4 that can bring fire out and then be able to use that fire for other attacks in future turns. Who could he use that on, though? The so range four, one, two, three, four. If he can just move three spaces over here, he could start attacking this elite. Or if he could attack a few things, yeah, he nearly, he's, he's melee, really, so he wants to be in people's faces. He does have wind up here. This card would go out as an active, and on your next two attacks, add two attack. So yeah, I think Marty is gonna, he's gonna start working on this elite over here. So he needs to move three, Destroy an adjacent obstacle. He wouldn't be next to an obstacle. Just thinking of a way of him moving. Now, something else that wasn't in the first scenario is these two little symbols here at the side of your cards. This means that any card, the top of it can always be used for two attack, or the bottom of it could always be used for two movement, no matter what the card actually says. So you do have more and more options. So for moving three, he hasn't got that much choice. He might have to just use the one that uh, would destroy an obstacle. And if you do destroy an obstacle, you get an experience and you get to bless yourself. Uh, bless is you know, a card that goes into your deck that will double your damage, but then it uh, leaves your deck. I think that's what Marty's going to do. And I'm just thinking it would be a shame to not move anything, but there is something I really like about the hatchet that I'm surprised wasn't my very first thought. I am going to change my mind about the first thing that I play. I'm not going to do that attack just yet. And I might not even be moving. I want to play this favorite card. Now, this is something to do with the, the hatchet, in case you haven't seen scenario one, is all about axes, throwing axes mainly. And the favorite card lets me grab one of my character tokens. I put it on this card. Whenever I do a ranged attack, after we've sorted out uh, the, the value and stuff, I can put this token on an enemy to say, you know, they're my, my favorite enemy, <laughs> and it adds three to the attack. And other cards that I have reference, you know, if there's a favorite token there, other things happen. When the enemy dies, the token just stays there and I have to walk over there to retrieve it. You know, it's, it's an axe. I need to go over there and grab it back. So I think I'm going to get favorite out, actually. So what would I like to do on the bottom? Moving would be, it would be okay, but I would put myself next to someone who's going to get to attack. Could I do something, you know, push, I could move and push an enemy, but I, I can't really push him into a trap from where he is right now. Uh, double the value of your next attack this round isn't that exciting. Maybe we could do a move. What if we what if we tried to go really slowly? No, I can't I can't go that slowly. If I did my move but said that was my main one and so my initiative would be 60, 
I'm going to do those two cards now. Bit of a change of heart there. So we reveal. And so I would say my initiative 60. Marty would say his is, uh, he wants to go fast as possible. He wants to go 19. And then we reveal cards for the enemy types that are present on the board as well. So we have the Zealot is going to do Unholy Flame at number 82. And uh, the Stone Golem is going to do Sacrificial Hurl at uh, 72. So we can look at the initiative tracker now. And so Demolitionist is at 19. I am at 60. Stone Golem might be a little bit hard to see from uh, from far away. Stone Golem next and then the Zealot. That is the turn order for this round. Thank you very much. And so it's going to be Marty first. So I did say at the beginning that I was going to sort out this uh, Zealot, didn't I? But now, yeah, I've, I've changed my mind. So maybe <laughs> Marty's made plans based on what I was doing. What if he walked around here? Two, three. Because then he would be, or he could just go, he could just go two here. And then he would be adjacent to an obstacle. Yeah, he's going to destroy this obstacle so we can put a demolished token there. So this is just a standard hex now. Because he did that, he gains an XP. So we tick this up here and that's going to help him towards leveling up. And he performs Bless on himself. So that means we grab a Bless card and this is going to get shuffled into his modifier deck. So he's going to attack now. I think he is going to stick with attacking the elite with an explosive blitz. So that's going to be an attack two with modifier minus one. So it's just going to be one little damage on the elite here who is number four. So still got seven health and puts out fire as an element. So fire now goes from inert to strong. And while it is strong or waning, you know, each round it will tick down. It can be used by any player. So those cards can get discarded. You can't, by the way, you can't use an element in the turn that you yourself make it. I could use that fire even in the same round, but Marty couldn't make it and then use a card to use it straight away. He'd have to wait till his next turn to use it himself. And actually, as luck would have it, the enemies are putting out uh, fire as well. Anyway, it's uh, we look at the tracker and it's my turn next. So I am putting out an active card and... I you know, haven't got as much space as I would like. I'm just going to cover up my beautiful picture with it. So this card stays out for the rest of the game. If I ever decide to pull it back, it's going to be lost. This uh, this symbol here means stays out, and the infinity symbol just stays out. Uh, I get two experience for playing this. One, two. And I put one of my tokens on this card. And when I do a ranged attack, I can designate someone as my favorite. I still have my move three. And I do want to do this because... The Zealots are going to do ranged attacks, range three. So this Zealot can hit us both. Well, either of us, not both of us. He's only going to attack one person, but he's not going to move. Now, if I kind of sacrifice myself and move one, two, three, remember two movement to enter the difficult terrain, I can force this attack to be at disadvantage. So he would draw two modify cards and pick the worst one. I like the idea of that because he's going to hit one of us anyway. We might as well try and minimize that damage a little bit. So that's my turn. It's time for the Stone Golem. So the Stone Golem is going to do Sacrificial Hurl. Attack plus one. So it's base attack. It's just a normal Golem. It's base attack is three. We can see on the cards over there. And if the attack is performed, the Stone Golem suffers two damage. I guess because he's kind of torn part of himself apart to uh, throw at us. Uh, but he is nowhere near in range. His, uh, his range on that attack is three. Nowhere near anybody, so he is just not doing anything. Then we have the Zealots. So remember, we start off with Elites. Range three. Nowhere near anybody. This one, of course, not in range. They've picked cards where they didn't involve any movement. Uh, and uh, the, the Zealot next to me is going to attack. Oh, I put Wind out, didn't I? Just thinking when I saw the, the flame element that the Zealots are putting out. Because yes, enemies can uh, use elements as well as put them out. So he's going to do a ranged attack of plus one. So a Zealot's base attack is two for a normal one. It would be three if he was elite. So his basic attack is two plus one. So that's going to be attack of three on me. But he is at disadvantage. So we draw two cards. Plus one, zero. So that is going to be three damage to me. I can use, though, my heater shield. When damaged by an attack, gain shield one for the attack. So it's going to prevent one of the damage. That's then tapped and I can't use it again unless I long rest. I can recover in that way. 
So I only take two damage and I'm on six health. So everybody has acted this round. We need to shuffle the Zealot deck because we've got the shuffle symbol in the corner of this card, even though it was the first one, just happened to be a shuffle one. And then we'll be ready to pick cards again for round two. I want to do ranged attacks now. I've got my favorite thing out. So I want to do this attack just because I can take out the summoning stone at the same time. I do then want to run off and start doing ranged attacks. So I can be doing that. But what can I do with the bottom? Move and then push an enemy and then move. That's nice. I could maybe move behind him. I can push him too, but I still couldn't push him you know, into the trap from where I am right now. Uh, this is a lost card, so I don't really want to do the bottom of that. Double the value of your next attack. That would be brilliant, but I would lose this card. I don't want to do, I don't want to lose cards so early in the round. Uh, so here we go. His retrieval refers to my favorite token. Attack two, and if the target has your favorite token, return the token to the card. So, you know, <laughs> do an attack and pull the, the axe out and take it back. Uh, move three and then push the enemy. Move and immobilize, but I'll lose that. Move three, add two movement and get an XP if you killed an enemy this round. So I don't particularly want to do anything. The bottom of close cuts would be nice. Attack two and then move two. But uh, yeah, I want to do the top of that. I think we would be very lucky to kill an enemy with what we've got at the moment. Maybe we just want to do a normal move. I don't want to use any of these loss abilities yet, so we would just move two with that. So I could go at 25. I'm happy with that. That's quite fast. And then Marty, if he concentrates on the elite, or maybe maybe he'll he could fire a shot at the other zealot because you know he's he's going to be weakened. He's going to take three damage, hopefully, maybe even more. So he can do attack three and stop the target healing. Now. Earth isn't out though, is it? Fire is out. What could he use fire on? This attack two, push two. And if he uses fire, plus one attack and plus one push. So that could be nice. If he, if he could get all the way over somewhere like here, pushing three could push this cell onto a trap, which is just three straight damage. No modifier card, no shields, no nothing. Same as this, if he could get on the other side of this cell, because you always have to push enemies. Every hex that you push an enemy has to be further away from you. So if you're standing here, you couldn't just push an enemy to here because it's still adjacent to you. It has to end up further away. So that's that's going to be great later, but fire's out now. Uh, move. It could move six with this card because uh, it's move four and then move an extra two if fire's out. Oh, yes, he can do this. He can do a big move and then... Yeah, as long as he goes faster than the Zealous, something cool's going to happen. He's going to go for one, two punch because that's got a, an added ability if you attack the same person with both bits of punch. So, yes, that's what Marty's going to do. So we would reveal Marty is going at 28. Just wants to go before the Zealots, really. Uh, and I am going to go at 25. The Zealots are going at 27. Oh, so I'm before, but Marty's after. Drain life, move, ranged attack, and then heal themselves. And then taxing advance from the stone golems. They're going at 28, same as Marty. So when the enemy goes at the same speed as a player, you can decide who goes first. So that's going to be me, Zealots, and then Marty's going to choose to go before the stone golems. It doesn't really matter because the stone golems are so far away that they're not going to really have an impact just yet till we start going over there. And they start moving, but you know the, the standard movement is just one. They're, they're great big stone golems. How fast do you want them to go? Okay, so for me, I am starting out with close cuts. So that's going to be an attack three at both of the things I'm stood next to. So the summoning stone and the zealot. Let's say it's going to be the zealot first. Move away these things to try and make space for a, a discard pile for this. So zealot first. Oh, minus one it would be, wouldn't it? So I've only done two damage to the zealot. Who's going to heal, actually, isn't he? <laughs> so that is number three. And then attacking the summoning stone. Plus two, of course it is. <laughs> so f five, I only needed three on that one. Uh, so the summoning stone is taken out, though. Summoning stone's got three health and now has none. It's replaced with just a normal hex there. And so that's one of the ones we needed to take out. Done. And I get an experience for playing that card. So I've got myself... 3 XP now. My other one I'm just moving, uh, I'm just using as a move 2, aren't I? Now the Zealot does have range 2, so it could still hit me anywhere. I think I'm just going to run up here. 1, 2, I'm going to grab this uh, this coin. Now loot actions are the way that you get coins and treasure and stuff, but if you end your movement on one, you get it all the same. So I will grab that and get myself some gold. So it's time for the Zealots now. We start with the Elite. 
He's going to move plus zero, so his movement is two, and his base attack is three. That actually means that at range two, he can move two towards Marty. Marty is one space closer than I am, so he would focus Marty. And yeah, he's three spaces away still, so can't use his range two attack. And then he heals himself for X, where X is the damage suffered by the target of the attack. Well, the target suffered zero damage. Then Zealot one can go, uh, can move two spaces, one, two, not in range of anybody, so it doesn't heal either, but hasn't taken any damage, so doesn't need to. Uh, and then for me, number three is doesn't need to move, it's just going to attack me for minus one. Uh, its base attack is two, so it attacks me for one, draws a card, attacks me for two damage. I can't uh, prevent that anymore, so I'm down to four health already. Oh dear. Uh, and the enemies are going to put Knight out. Speaking of uh, elements, we should have brought these down at the end of the round into waning. Now, uh, Dark is all the way up there. And we're going to go on to Marty's turn. So Marty has got a really big movement, and then he can push and muddle an enemy. Now, this is going to put him at risk of being in range of a load of zealots, but he's going to... So he can move up to six by using the flame. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, I think, around there probably come the other way with all the movement that he's got so he consumes the fire doing that and then he's doing a one two punch so first of all it's attack two on this elite zealot that's going to be plus one so three damage over on him so he's got four health left and then attack one on him again so that's just one more damage plus zero on his modifier and from that we can do Add push two and muddle and gain an XP if the second attack targeted the same enemy as the first attack, which it did. So he can push this zealot two spaces away. This is why he came up behind him, because now he can push onto the trap, which is three straight damage. He's only got three health left. So this zealot, as well as the trap, is taken out. And when enemies die, they leave behind a money token. So that was a great result, almost taking him out uh, completely in one go. What, did he have one damage already? Uh, and so that's uh, one XP that needs to go onto Marty. He's got two now. And finally, the Stone Golem can move. Normally they move one, but this is plus one. And so it's going to move two towards Marty. And then it's going to do a melee attack. If the move ability were, was performed, the Stone Golem suffers a damage. It's a taxing advance. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot on this Stone Golem to, to ask it to lumber around. And so Stone Golem number one takes the damage. And we are done for the round again. So adjust the elements. No one used the wind and the dark wanes. And we need to shuffle the zealots again. They <laughs> just love shuffling these cards up, don't they? Okay, so time to pick some cards for a new round. I've run away from this zealot a little bit, but I need to take him out, don't I? He's only taken two damage, so he's got four health left. But I am in the position now. I can't use the wind anymore. I've left it a bit too late for that. But I can do a very nice ranged attack by making him the favorite. So the, the favorite token's ability, by the way, happens after the attack's kind of got the text on the card's gone through. So the cards that say, oh, if it has the favorite token, you can't give it the favorite token and the card you play have that extra effect at the same time. You've got to already have given him this thing. So what if we just give him a base attack three and then maybe a movement card? We could move and go and get the axe back. How far away is he? two spaces away so I only need to move two and oh what about this add movement and gain xp if you killed an enemy this round I'm planning on killing him uh, it would just be pretty bad if uh, we drew the miss card which is possible isn't it I can move at 18 though that's a good initiative to have and then Marty what's he gonna do so the stone golem's still a ways away it's the, it's the Zealot over here that's the worry. Oh, what about this, though? Attack three. Add two attack and an XP if the target is adjacent to the wall. Crushing weight. So he's charging over with his, uh, with his power fists and uh, getting ready to take the Zealot out. It seems like the perfect time to do that. So what about the bottom, then? He needs to get over there. He needs at least two movements. This and destroy an obstacle and strengthen himself. It wouldn't be next to an obstacle in any way. Uh, stun. No, he needs to be over there first. 
Move and destroy obstacles and stuff is nice, but he doesn't need it. Or if he just uses this move, it's a slow one. Uh, he will just use the other card as his initiative, so he's got initiative 22. And I think that's going to be all good. So we reveal 22 for Marty. Mine was lower than that, wasn't it? It's 18 for me. And for the enemies, Zealots are going at 82. It's Unholy Flame again. They love that, don't they? And uh, it's Calculated Strike for the Golem. So very slow for both of those. So it's going to be me, Marty, Zel uh, Zealot Golem. So what was my plan? I was, uh, I was doing the favorite token, wasn't I? So I'm doing Attack 3 at range 3. And then I am going to make them my favorite and add 3 attack to this ranged attack. So it's going to be Attack 6. Attack 7, they've got 6 base health, and he had 2 damage anyway. Boom! Taken out. So, a nice coin there, and my axe is, you know, they, they've, uh, <laughs> they've kind of dissolved into nothingness. And so my, uh, my trusty axe is left behind on the floor there, along with a coin they had in their pocket or something. So that worked out perfectly, and then I'm going to move 3, add 2 move, and gain an XP if you killed an enemy. Now, I'm not going to use that extra move, because I want to end up on my favorite token so I can get it back and use it again and it doesn't hurt to gain a bit of uh, gold does it and so I get an XP because I killed an enemy and used my second wind love that combination okay so it's Marty up next and he is gonna charge and crush someone against a wall isn't he he is going to move one two maybe in danger of uh, <laughs> Yeah, let's 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 move him there, just in case someone can uh, push him against that trap or something. Doesn't want to stand anywhere near it. Although uh, one, two, it takes two to get on there, doesn't it? Yeah, he's just going to stand there, and uh, so destroy an obstacle within range three. He could do that. Yeah, why not? Yeah, he'll destroy that obstacle. Make it easier to get around in the future, maybe. Does also make it easier for the stone golem to get around, but yes. It'll be fine. They've actually got attack minus, they've got to move minus one. And a regular stone golem's movement is one, so it's not moving anywhere. And then attack three. Add two attack and an XP if your target is adjacent to a wall, which it is. So this is an attack five. Attack six. They've got six health. This is working out insanely well. Uh, but uh, remember, the, the objective is to get the summoning stones, not uh, just to kill these enemies. And gain an XP. Here we go. And remember, this is only scenario four in, uh, in the game. There are the 25 in the box. So that's us, isn't it? The Zealots don't do anything because they've been killed, all of them. And the Stone Golem is going to move zero and attack adjacent to it, which is nothing. So yeah, that works out perfectly. So it's the end of the round. We've still got cards. I don't think we are thinking about resting just yet. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's pick some more cards. So do we worry about the Stone Golem even? Or I think it's probably a good idea to try and race towards a summoning stone and give it a punch. So I'm not, I'm not so good about um, the, the, the melee attacks. Why doesn't Marty go and uh, hit that one that's next to him? So he's got three cards left. Attack three. All heals targeting the target have no effect this round. It uh, doesn't matter, does it, for, for, th for this purposes, but it's, it's an attack three. We haven't got flames out or anything. Actually, the dark needs to wane, doesn't it, even further to be inert again. And uh, yeah, just, just move over to that. I think he'll use these. He's just going to walk over to that summoning stone and give it a punch with uh, initiative 20. And for me, I could get over to the summoning stone. See, I've got range four and I could give it my, uh, my favorite token. See, range one, two, three, four. I would need to move... Let's see, not in the difficult terrain. I would need to move four to actually get in range of that. Can I move four? No. Not unless I want to you know, lose a card for a bigger move. I have got my stamina potion, which lets me return a card to my hand. And uh, yeah, I haven't got a big move there. Move three with jump. Move three and add more movement. Yeah, if I'd left my favorite token behind, I could have moved more, but then I wouldn't have been able to use my favorite token. So kind of uh, pointless to think about that. So we could just think about walking over to this summoning stone for now and giving it uh, a bit of a whack. Yeah, how far can I move? So move one and loot isn't great, is it? If we do this disorienting barrage, I don't really need to attack a load of things at once and muddle them just yet. So let's, let's just walk over here. 
I need three movement though, don't I? I haven't got move three on any of these things. Okay, let's let's use stamina. Seems a bit of a waste. But I will use my stamina potion so I can move three and go and hit that summoning stone and hope to do something to it. So I'll keep hold of these cards. Uh, this does not recharge when I long rest. This is done for the rest of the scenario. But you don't you don't you don't you know permanently use them or anything like that. You don't need to buy them again. They will come back. They will refresh like everything in a new scenario. So my initiative is going to be 24. And the stone golem is going to be going at 10. Runic feedback. Anytime a figure attacks the stone golem this round, they suffer three damage. So good job that uh, I changed my mind. So the stone golem is going first, but he's just doing that. Uh, and then it's going to be Marty and then me, isn't it? So Marty is charging over. Two, yeah, he's just doing move two with this, isn't he? So he's doing one, two. So he doesn't get this gold because he didn't stop on it, but he grabs this one. And then he's doing an attack three and putting earth out. And he would stop the summoning stone from healing, but that's, of course, not happening. So attack three and a modifier. <laughs> it would be his blessing, wouldn't it? <laughs> when he doesn't need it at all. So that is removed from his deck and he does six damage to that summoning stone, which splinters into dust. And there we go, if you didn't believe me. It's happened right before your very eyes. We can stop right there because we need to read some special rules. The tremors have subsided. You know, the, the, the room was uh, disintegrating in front of us. Uh, you feel you've finally gotten a handle on things, but then more men with robes rush from the deeper tunnels of this wretched place to aid the others. Sorry, I'm trying to read from really far away. So, continues down here. Spawn one normal and one elite zealot at B... And then if we had three or four characters, we would spawn even more things. When the remaining two summoning stones have been destroyed, read two. So we need a normal and an elite zealot at B. Which actually is pretty good, isn't it? When we played this for the first time, we were right down here when that happened. <laughs> Hadn't really thought about the spawning and uh, just went and destroyed a summoning stone and we're in the middle of a load of enemies. But anyway, so we have a normal and an elite there. And it reminds us in the tip, they... they Spawn at their marked locations. If the hex is occupied, which it will be because two are spawning on this space, they spawn in the nearest unoccupied hex. Remember, spawned monsters always act in the round they are spawned. So we need a card for zealots, and they're going to go at 27, which is after me. So that's, that's what Marty did. He destroyed that summoning stone. Do I want to change my mind on what I'm doing now? Not really, because they're so far away. They are going to do a ranged attack, so they're going to get to move two and then range two. So move two, range two. Yeah, they're not, they're not going to be in range of me yet, but they're bringing themselves nicely in range of me for, for next turn, perhaps. I'm using a nice ranged card here, aren't I? Because I needed to move three here. One, two, three. Next to the summoning stone. Get uh, a bit of gold. Don't mind if I do. And uh, yes, we are just using this as an attack two, aren't we? Rather than its uh, printed thing, we're using it for its substitute value. So I would like a plus one. Plus one is what I get. Brilliant. So that is the third summoning stone destroyed. Put a destruction token on it. That's just a normal hex now. So just one more, but we still need to destroy the enemies and something's going to happen when we destroy the last one. So we're not in the clear just yet. That is the end of my turn though. So it's time for the, the zealots. They're going to move. They're basically going to move two and do nothing else because it's that one where they attack and then heal themselves. They're going to put dark out, but they're just going to move two towards me, I believe. And the stone golem just stayed where he was. So there we go. That is the end of this round. So now Marty just has one card left. He's not going to be able to act in the next round. So he can either short rest. And so he shuffles his discard pile and loses a random one. You can take a damage and try again for a different one, but only once. Or he long rests, skips his whole next turn, but he gets to choose what he loses. I think he's going to do a short rest because, yeah, he hasn't even used his poison dagger yet to uh, need to refresh that or anything. So he keeps the one he had in his hand, and I will shuffle these, and let's see what he loses. And it is implode. So his attack uses earth. He has got that out and destroy an obstacle within range three. He's, he's just going to live with that, I think. And so he has his, his whole hand ahead of him now. Maybe a good time to use the big one. He, he wants to lose two cards in one go, doesn't he? And I think he's only got... He's only got this card down here where he can lose the bottom of it. So move three, if you opened a door, perform stun all enemies within range three. So it would just be a, a move three and get an XP card, wouldn't it? Uh, for losing that ability. But he could do, if he did that at the same time as the big one, 
the big one's got range two on it. So he could move. Oh, he's in difficult terrain, isn't he? So it'd be one, two, three, and then one, two. But then the pattern could start here. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. He would get both of the zealots, but I think save that until we're a bit closer. In terms of ranged attacks, though, he's not uh, the strongest on that, is he? He can destroy obstacles and stuff and stun enemies adjacent to the obstacle. Yeah, maybe he just wants to... Maybe he just wants to start moving and do wind-up on your next two attacks. Add to attack. Which could be the big one, is an attack. Ooh. So, yeah, let's, let's just get him moving around. So he could, uh, he could move four. Earth is out, so he could you know, stun an adjacent enemy and poison it. Not, uh, not useful now, is it? Maybe he just wants to move four, then. He'll move four, and on his next two attacks, add two attack. Because he could do two, three, four, and get this treasure. Does just It might put him in a vulnerable position, though. He's got a healing potion, and he hasn't lost any health yet. He's fine. Uh, so he's going to move at 28, and put the rest of these back in his hand. And for me, I have three cards still haven't rested yet. So I can give someone... I, I could use... Wind isn't out, but I could do an attack three at range two. I'd have to move over to them more, though, wouldn't I, again? See, range, range two isn't great for me, is it? Because maybe I should have short rested. It's a bit early to short rest, but... Perhaps I should have, because I, I've got range four here. But it adds two attack if they've got my favourite token. Maybe I'll, I'll just have to not do that uh, part and give them my favourite token now. So range four would be one, two, three, four. They're at range four now. So brilliant. I, I don't particularly want to move. I have to play two cards, though. Because I think they're going to come to me. So let's... Um, I'm not going to put wind out, am I? They are going to have my favourite token, so maybe it would be good to keep retrieval. I'm going to just play this one, so my speed will be 35. Not the quickest, but quickest I can manage at the moment. Okay then, so we need some cards for the Zealots. Uh, calculated Strike at 65. They're not ranged, so I don't think they're going to be able to get to me. And the Golem is going to do a hasty assault, uh, move and attack. So it's going to be Marty at 28, me at 35, and then Stone Golems, and then Zealots. Okay. So, Marty, take it away. What is he going to do? He's moving over to the treasure, isn't he? Now, now we know what they're going to do, though. They, they're going to move minus one, so they're going to move one space and then try to melee attack. So Marty is fine over here. So he's going to do his move four, two to get into difficult terrain, three, four. Just to be wary of getting pushed into that trap. I'm not sure that they do that. So, so when we find treasure in uh, Frosthaven, we need to grab the rules reference book and there's a little table in the back of it and so for treasure number 16 over here it gives us a mana potion which is an item you wouldn't get to use it straight away but uh, marty has that in his inventory now ready to take into a future scenario or sell it <laughs> he just wants the money so he's moved four and then he's going to put this out up here on your next two attacks add two attack and uh, yeah you get uh, an xp from this if you manage to do two attacks so that uh, just starts off there Next up, it's me. What was I doing? Oh, I was, I was ranged attacking, wasn't I? I think I might move here. I'm good. So I'm just using the bottom of this to move two. And then one, two, three, four. I'm going to attack the elite for two damage, but I'm going to give him my favorite token to add three to that attack. So that's going to be an attack five. Ah, oh, still attack three. Still decent. So yes, uh, attack three on him for number four. And, yeah, we don't want them to attack, do we? Because the elite is going to wound, and that wouldn't be nice. But that is it for me. I don't get the XP or anything because he didn't already have my favourite token. And I'm going to have to do some form of resting because I have one card left. Golems are up next. They're going to move plus one. So he's going to move two. So who's his target? So it would take him... So he could move through allies, but with two movement, he couldn't get onto the difficult terrain. He could just move there. So I would be one, two, three, four, five, six away. Marty would be two, four, five, six, seven. So I would actually be the focus. So he's going to move two closer to me. Okay. And he can't attack, of course. <laughs> it's an adjacent attack, and he's still quite far away. The calculated strike for the zealots then. Move minus one. So that's going to be move one and then try to do an adjacent attack. So I'm one, two, three away. Marty is one, two, three away. Marty went quicker, so he is the focus. So they're just going to move one and try to attack. 
to an adjacent attack so they can't. And I think it's the same. Well, Morty's a bit closer here, but one, two, three, four. He's not actually any closer because they'll have to focus because it's, it's four to go straight because this uh, is two movement to get to this. So two, three, but he's only got one movement. So to get closer, he's going to have to move there. I don't know if I'm explaining that in a clear way. But there we go. That's the round again. So we need to shuffle the stone golems. Always using these shuffle cards. So I am doing a short rest as well. I don't really want to stand there. I'm losing my power pitch. Now, I do really want that. I could do an attack nine later on with that card. But at the same time, I've only got four health. I don't want to lose one to, to change the card that I'm keeping. So it's uh, new round time. Elements should be waning and stuff. So it's new round time. What would I like to do? I don't really want to charge over there. I could. What about my attack if it targets the favorite? Yeah, I could do the same attack again. And it would be an attack four, and I'd get an XP because uh, the Elite has got my uh, favorite token. So we could do that. And I could even double the value of the attack if I was willing to lose this card. And on the other hand, I could do attack three on both of them if I was willing to lose this card. Hmm. Or, you know, if I could kill him, I could get a load of moving and XP as well. See, he has got four health left, though, and I'm just doing a four attack. So that's a bit confident that I'm not going to draw anything uh, negative. And my miss is still in there. I haven't shuffled that yet. So what, what else is there I could do? I could jump around. Yeah, maybe being a bit too reticent to use my lost cards. But no, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to cross my fingers that I'll get to move a load because I'm going to kill him with this card. Maybe I need to heal myself uh, for six at some point as well. Marty? What's he doing? He was thinking about losing a card, wasn't he, to do his big one, but I don't think he's going to do that anymore. It would be good if he could get in here, and then based on what I do, he could use his one-two punch on one or both of these guys. I don't think we want to run over and do the last summoning stone just yet, because I think it's going to make a load of uh, things spawn. They're not adjacent to a wall. Uh, we can stop them healing. Be nice for an attack three. I think that one-two punch is a nice thing to do. Well, it's not a nice thing to do. <laughs> From our perspective, it is. Uh, stun and poison, but you wouldn't be able to move over there, so that's not uh, great. He could, of course, destroy... Oh, that obstacle's already destroyed. He's already done that trick. Yeah, so he needs to move over. As an enemy that's adjacent to a wall suffers two damage. Can't do that, though. Move two, destroy an obstacle, and if you do, strengthen yourself. Now, he needs to move three, so unfortunately he's not going to be able to destroy an obstacle. And this is the big one. He's going to get the card back, though, hopefully. So yeah, he's going to do move three, and then he's going to do his one-two punch and uh, hope to do some good stuff over here. And actually, the attacks, the next two attacks get plus two on them, so... Oh yeah, that's why he was thinking of using his big one, wasn't he? But no, he's, he's not... That's, it's too early to use that, I think. We'll use that as the big finale for these last enemies. So, Marty's going at 37, not the quickest, but he did need uh, three uh, movement to get onto this space. And mine is 18, quite fast. Zealots are going at 46. They're doing ranged attack on two targets. And uh, the, oh, the golem is throwing part of itself up, away again and uh, with range three, which is going to be in range of Marty if he moves there. So maybe he wants to change his plans. Not cha can't change the cards that he picked, but he can change what he does with them. So it's going to be me, Marty, Zealots, Golems. So I was just firing off at them, wasn't I? I, I was uh, firing off at this elite again. So it's attack two, but plus two attack because he's got my favorite token and an XP. And don't forget the sweet XP. So that's going to be an attack four on the elite. Attack five. Oh, and he's already got, he's already got three damage. So that's dead. Three plus five is eight. He's got eight health. That's, yeah, he hasn't even got a chance, had a chance to wound us yet. So the favorite token goes on the floor there, along with a money token. And that's okay for Marty because he can just focus all of his stuff on the one-two punch. And so my other thing was, oh yeah, move loads. So can I get over here? One, two, three, four, five. I can. That would put me in range of the golem. And yeah, the golem would attack me over Marty, wouldn't he? And I don't really want to be in range of, the, you know, in the two range of the zealot for, hit, for their attack, because they're going to get to target two things. So I probably, I do just want to move here and get this gold, but I'm going to move one two, three. Let's see, Zealots have got range two, so as long as I stand here, I'm okay, and I, I can hopefully go and get my favorite token and some money next round, unless Marty hungrily wants that money. 
You know, I, I like uh, my favourite token, though. So I get another XP because I killed an enemy this round. So there we go. Six XP now. Very nice. Marty's next. And so he is doing his one-two punch, isn't he? Maybe overkill <laughs> for this. So he's going to run right up. One, two, three. Going to take an attack from the Stone Golem, though, for sure. So his first attack is attack two. Attack four, thanks to this. Oh, it's a miss. So he's going to shuffle this at the end of the round. But yeah, that's a miss. And then attack one plus two. So when you move the token off here, you get an XP. So that's uh, four XP now. And once it's moved off entirely, you uh, discard the card. It's not a lost symbol on this card. It's just a discard. So that's going to be attack three. Attack five. Oh, it's got six health. Very close. If only it had been the other way around and the, the first one had hit. So add push two, muddle, and gain an XP if the attack if the both attacks targeted the same thing. So he gets an XP and muddles. And does he want to push him away? He's got range two and he doesn't get to move. So actually, no, he doesn't want to move him away because he'll get disadvantage where he is now. Oh, he's muddled, so he get disadvantage anyway. But yeah, let's leave him let's leave him close at hand. Okay. So now it's time for the Zealot. The Zealot does an attack minus one. Uh, its attack normally is two. So it's just an attack one. It can't do target two because I'm too far away. So it's just an attack one on Marty. And then it's going to muddle him. But he is at disadvantage. So it's attack one. Yep, just straight up attack one. Marty takes his first damage of the scenario, I think. And he's he's muddled, though. Yeah, the enemy's muddled, but stops being muddled at the end of this turn. I'm just going to recycle this token, <laughs> since I already mistakenly put it on Marty. So he's there, standing there with one health. And then the golem is going to attack Marty for plus one. So the golem's attack is three. It's going to be four damage on Marty. Four damage. But he does have, remember, his, uh, his healing potion. Should maybe have done, if he'd done his poison dagger... Now, when poison gets put on a character, any time they get attacked, plus one gets added to that attack. So even though the first attack missed, it would have poisoned the enemy, and then the second attack would have killed him. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> using your head. So he takes three more damage, thanks to the stone golem. But he does have that uh, heal three potion that he can use on his turn. And if this attack is performed, the stone golem suffers two damage. So the stone golem's taken three damage now, all self-inflicted. <laughs> And that's the end of the round, isn't it? So Marty needs to shuffle his um, modifier deck because he found the, the miss with that symbol on it. And we're in for a new round. Marty maybe just wants to punch this summoning stone. So what can I do? Nobody's got my favorite token, have they? Could I start doing some damage to the stone golem? Let's see, attack three, range four, target two. If I'm there, I would be at disadvantage from the zealot is my only thought there. But I can loot the hex. What if I move one and loot one? Ooh. Yeah, I could attack both of these with a strong attack. I like the idea of that because I could put my, my favorite on the golem that wants the most damage doing to it because he's only got one health left, hasn't he? This would take him out. Yeah, let's go for this. It's not a very quick thing. It's 46, but I like the sound of that. I've got a good feeling about it. Marty. Wants to go quick and uh, take this guy out uh, as quickly as possible. Now he, now he hears me talking about going slowly. What if he goes quickly and destroys this summoning stone? And then even if he does get destroyed, there's, there'll be more enemies to attack maybe? Yeah, I think Marty is just going to concentrate his attacking this uh, summoning stone. And he can stun the zealot adjacent to him. So he's going at 20. And then both enemy types are still alive. So 77 and 64 for those. So it's going to be Marty, me... Golem Zealot. So Marty is just going to stun the Zealot, so the Zealot's not going to get to attack, but hopefully is, is going to be finished off by my very much overkill attack. And then Marty's doing attack three, putting Earth out, and uh, doing attack three on the Summoning Stone. Minus one! So uh, yeah, just two damage to the Summoning Stone, unfortunately. He's going to need another attack to finish that off. And uh, yeah, that's, that's done with. For me... I am I'm moving one space and looting. So I get this gold and I loot my favorite token back. Then I'm doing my double throw. So I'm losing this. I'm doing attack three, but I'm going to give the golem my favorite token. So it's going to be attack three on this zealot, attack six on him. So on the zealot, miss, 
So <laughs> good job he's stunned and everything. And I'm really glad that I said Zealot first. Because then it's going to be attack six on the golem. And I know that it can't miss. Just attack six. Uh, so with uh, the three damage it's taken, it's got shield one. So it prevents one of that damage. So I've done five more to it. It's got two health left. And I put wind out and get two XP. Is that eight now? But I do lose that card for using uh, such a powerful ability. Next up, the golem is going to move nothing and attack adjacent. Uh, move plus zero. Uh, it's still going to try and move. So closest is one, two. It's, it's Marty, isn't it? He's going to move back over to Marty and try and get to him. Not close enough to attack anyone. And the zealot is just stunned, loses its stun token, but doesn't get to act. Was going to you know, do, a, do a melee attack. Well, Marty hasn't healed, has he? Let's do a quick, uh, quick take back for Marty because you never know what's going to happen. He is going to heal himself back up to 7 health with his potion, which he did mean to do on his turn. Okay, so it's a new round. I don't think anything needed... Oh, actually, my, I, did, I drew my mist, didn't I? So I need to shuffle that and we need to move the elements down a bit. So unless Marty wants to rest, he's got a very simple choice for this round. Maybe he just wants to... attack to the summoning stone and try and move two away. If stuff's going to summon in one of these spaces... Maybe he wants to long rest next turn, or at least be away from it for a bit while he decides what to do. And whilst he should have been muddled, actually, so he should have drawn two cards and picked the worst. So nothing changes apart from what's in his discard pile, and he loses the muddle at the end of his turn because he started his turn with it. So yeah, Marty's just going to go quickly with that one, 19. And I've got a bit of choice. I've got four cards. So this wouldn't be much good. I see wind is out, so this is attack three, range two, plus one range and push two. If I use the wind, nothing concerning my favorite token is out here. What if I, oh, I like the, I like the sound of this. It's not going to be a very powerful attack though, is it? I would like to try and finish the golem off. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do, I don't know, I could, I could finish the, the, the cell's got one health, hasn't he? I could just attack him and try and push him loads into into that trap and be sure that we'll kill him but mm, we can push other things into the trap we just do a straight up so I need to move three I think to be in one two three I only need to move two actually I could do a, an attack three on the golem and hope that kills it and then maybe this disorienting barrage Actually, if I don't use the wind this time, it's not going to be in anymore, is it? So we'll use the bottom of this one. Okay, so my speed is 24. And unbelievably, both of these are still alive. So uh, that is 35 for them and 10. Uh, so we don't want to attack the golem. Ugh. Or I'll take three damage. I can't do that. So Marty first. Marty's attacking a... Marty's attacking the stone, isn't he? And then he's going to move away. Actually, Marty could attack the stone here. It would only be attack two, but he only needs to do one damage to it. And then look at this. Move two. One adjacent enemy that's adjacent to a wall suffers two damage. He could do that to the stone golem because that's not an attack. He would be stood here. Or, or there if he wants to be. But I think that's a good move. Yeah, he's just going to use this as attack two standard. Oh, miss. <laughs> so he can stand here and he'll still be next to the stone to try and take it out next time. And then he'll do two damage to the golem, which kills it. Which is good because uh, we, we couldn't uh, do attacks on it. I just want this stuff to spawn. Uh, okay, so that stuff's just um, that stuff's just in the discard pile for Marty and he's going to have to think about resting. And as for me, maybe I should just charge up to it and <laughs> hit it. Yeah, I'm just going to move with this one and attack. So move two. Yeah, I don't need to move any more than that. And I'm going to attack three. Attack two. It's only got one health left, so dead. The thing there, I want to go over and get my axe, don't I, at some point. But most importantly, I did that card because I get an XP for it. And I'm on nine XP now. So there for my discard pile. Wait a minute, did I pick these two? Well, these were the two I picked, didn't I? Did I? I can't remember. I don't reckon... These cards are suddenly so alien. 
I don't know. They're going into my Discord pile anyway. They're the ones that I picked. <laughs> okay, so nobody gets to go because there are no enemies out there anymore. I think this would be a good time for long resting because there's no risk. So just uh, this is the whole round then just gets skipped because that, that's in Marty's lost pile, isn't it? So what would Marty like to lose? Again, he hasn't used his dagger <laughs> and so that won't recover. But out of all of these, he definitely wants to keep the big one. And what's the card where the bottom ability is a loss? Because he wants to try and do his uh, battle goal. Definitely wants to keep those two. So do damage if they're against walls. Pushy push. Uh, stop them from healing. It's a good attack. Definitely wants to keep one-two punch. That's great. Maybe wind up. That's good for a lot of movement. Uh, oh, everything's good. Wind up, I think. Get rid of wind up. Okay. Oh, but he wanted to do wind up with big. He could do wind up for the turn before big one, and it would be a crazy attack. Yeah, he'll get rid of this one with all the pushing. And you heal two health as well when you uh, do a long rest. So I can recover my shield and two health. So I'm back up to six. And I didn't necessarily need to long rest, but uh, I get some good choice again, don't I? So muddle all of the people. Close cuts I like. Things with favorite token I like. I like having the heal six in an emergency. Let's get rid of the disorienting barrage. Yeah. Although that's, you know, loads of moving around and all the adjacent enemies suffer a damage. That could be quite cool, actually, as a nice ending. My heal might not be that important. Let's, let's get rid of retrieval, getting the favorite token back. Okay, then, so no elements are out anymore, and we're ready to <laughs> try and hit this thing, so... What if, has Marty got his wind up ready? He didn't lose that, did he? Marty's gonna wind up and get ready. Has he got an attack on the bottom of a card that he could hit the attack one, loot one? Well, that'd be good for him. I still need to go and get my favorite token. But yeah, he's, he's hoping to get the stone uh, with that attack one, even though it's his one, two punch card though. He's, he's hoping to take enemies out with his great big, uh, Big one, isn't he? In a, in a bit. So he's, he's going late, 66 and 77. So uh, say he's going late. I don't think I can go later than that, because if he's going to make the enemy spawn, you know, I would like to, to go after they spawn so I can do stuff or I can react to where they're going and stuff. So I need to move three if I would like to go and get my thing back. So let's just do this, and I'm not going to get to do a lovely attack, am I? Let's just do second wind on top, because I don't want to heal yet, so yeah, that's just going to be mine. I'm just going to go really quick. So I'm basically, my entire turn is going to be moving over there and getting this, and uh, sorry Marty, uh, taking the wind out of his uh, big loot action, unfortunately. So if he misses this again, me not doing anything is going to really mess us up. But he's going to do attack one. He'll do this attack first. Attack one, loot one. Oh, he needed to shuffle, didn't he? Okay, so attack one. There we go. Boom. Finally. He takes that out. And wh what happens when all the things have been taken out? Spawn a stone golem. We just have the same one. And two normal zealots at A. And then more if there were more characters. Okay, so this is what we need to kill to complete this scenario. They get to go this round, don't they? So they're at 27, they're at 51. So the Zealots have got a range 2 attack and can move 2. So this one's number 1. Can move 2 and then he's in range 2. Doesn't loot that goal, by the way. Uh, so he does attack minus 1. So that's just an attack of 1 on Marty. And his card is plus 1, so that's attack 2 on Marty, unfortunately. So he's on, he was at full health though. And then this one can do the same. Attack, uh, attack minus one, so it's attack one, attack zero. So missed. And uh, they heal, but they've only just come out, so they're not healing anything, are they? Right, so Marty's joined us, by the way. Hello, Marty. How long he'll be there for? We are, we're giving up for a massive attack, aren't we? This is, this is, this is Marty, well, that's Marty's great big shining attack, isn't it? See you, Marty. 
Uh, he doesn't need to move, does he? So, so what it means with the pattern, a bit more in-depth. So this is the pattern of the attack. And range 2 means that one of the hexes of this pattern has to be up to 2 away. So the pattern can start here. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. He can get all the enemies in this attack. He's not necessarily going to kill them outright. But thanks to... Oh, this should be this should be out, shouldn't it, as active. Thanks to this, it's going to be attack 5 on all this, these hexes. It's not a melee attack, so he can't add poison to it. But that's still great. Can he do anything cool with other ones? Move to destroy adjacent obstacle and then strengthen yourself. He could just ignore the move 2 part. Because this still happens. He could, he could destroy this thing next to himself and strengthen himself so he gets advantage on all of these three attacks. Oh, but he wants to do, but he wants to lose two things, doesn't he? So, yeah, it's already set in stone what he's going to do. Uh, so this is move three. If you opened a door during the movement, perform stun, target all enemies with range three. So he didn't open the door. There's no doors in this scenario. Uh, but, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I realized as well. <laughs> and uh, the little, uh, a little break then. I realised as well, I've, I've just completely ruined a whole scenario's worth of not going near Marty at the end of my turns by rushing over here and getting my uh, axe, so I'm not getting a tick at the end of this scenario. So Marty's decided anyway, isn't he? He's going at 19, he's going to try and take these out before they move out of a lovely uh, shape, perfect for his bomb. And what would I like to do? I could attack everyone, I've got my favourite token. So yeah, I probably should have lost some health and kept... That thing, there's no elements out, so I could do an attack six, maybe attack six on one of these. What's this, uh, this is attack two at range four. One, two, three, four, five. So I'd have to move one, so I would be a bit closer to the golem, because I could use my favorite token to make it an attack five. Oh, and I could do this, couldn't I? Move two, everyone suffers a damage. Move one, everyone suffers a damage that's adjacent. Yeah, let's do that. This is this is the time for big attacks. Or I could jump in and immobilize everyone, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so mine is 39, not so quick. And Marty's 19. And oh, we need to shuffle these. So Zealots are Boiling Blood, 46, and Hasty Assault from the Stone Golem. So it's still Marty, me, Zealot Golem. Okay, so Marty, come on, here's his big attack. So, the big one. It's going to affect all of them. Oh, a push would be brilliant, wouldn't it? They're, they're right next to this trap. So, yes. So it's going to be attack five. Slide that onto its thing. Attack five. All of these people put fire and earth out and get an experience. Oh, no. He, uh... Oh, yeah, he's not at advantage, is he? Not quite perfect, but he, he's taking the hit because he wants his uh, tick. So uh, attack three on this zealot. Uh, oh, no, it's uh, five, isn't it? So five damage to the zealot. Six health, unfortunately. But that means me with my one damage to adjacents would kill it. Uh, the next one, attack five. Double ten damage. Wish I'd said uh, golden for that one. Uh, so this one is taken straight out. And we have a goal there. Is it standing there? And finally, the golem. Plus zero, so that's five damage. It's got a shield, so four damage. And then he can lose this one to move three. I'm not sure where he would want to go in particular. What, what are these guys going to do? They're going to do ranged attack. Marty's got six health, hasn't he? I don't think he's in danger. He's going to run right into the thick of it and grab some gold with his three movements. Uh, so he's lost both of those cards now. He's got three cards in hand and one in his discards. Oh, actually, this is going to go in his discard as well, isn't it? So, yes, that's another gold for him. And it's me next. So, I've got my attack range four, because I can, I can come in and do this first, can't I? So, yeah, it won't get me right next to the golem, but move two, all adjacent enemies suffer a damage. Dead. Move one, all adjacent enemies suffer two damage, and pick up these. And then move one again. So I think I'll just move away again, because I don't need to be that close. So get an XP for doing that. 10 XP now. Lose that card. And then attack five at range four, because I'm using my favorite token. So, yeah, nothing to, nothing to add to that. Attack four. 
Minus one, so attack three on it. So he's got seven damage out of ten health. So lives another day. And the golem is going to move... Is it plus one? So he can move two. He's just going to move towards Marty and then attack for minus one. So his attack two. Oh dear, attack four. Now what you can do... You can lose a card from your hand to negate all damage that's coming in. And maybe Marty wants to do that. He's on six health. Or he could do it next turn if it's going to kill him. Yeah, he'll just take the hit now. So he's down to two health. And uh, yeah, so let's don't get to go because they're not around anymore. So here we go then. Could this be the final turn? It all comes down to this. I've just got two cards. Neither of them reference my favourite token. What do I? I don't have that retrieval anymore, do I? And I've just got heal six. I haven't got a really powerful card, so maybe I'm just going to run in and attack three. Jump in, immobilise him, and then attack three and try and get an extra XP. So I'm going at 25. Marty. Let's see, attack three and add two if he's against a wall. He's not against a wall. Could we push him? We could discuss that. Can, can we get him against a wall? And I could, um, what's out? Fire and Earth. So I want the XP. But if I move him and push him, I'm not going to be next to him, am I? So maybe I give up the XP and do a ranged attack. Just, just so we're sure we're doing as much damage as possible so that we're trying to finish him off. I'm, I'm sacrificing some XP for Marty, but I have earned a lot. And so Marty wants to do is potentially attack five if he's next to a wall or even the move next to a wall would really hurt him and then uh, do that attack three so Marty's going at 20 I'm going at 39 and the golem is going at 28 so it, oh no oh no Marty wants to go late doesn't he oh wait wait let's oh, we've seen when the golem's going Marty hasn't got any slow cards so this plan has fallen at the first hurdle so um yeah, my Marty is going to... Yeah, we want the golem to move so he'll do damage to himself. Oh! How much damage has the golem got? 7 out of 10, and he would do 1 damage to himself. We could do more damage, I think. Destroy an adjacent obstacle, there's nothing around, is there? Pushing him into the trap would have been a good idea. But anyway, he's just going to do attack 3, plus 2, so it's an attack 5. Attack six, boom. The golem is taken out before we have to worry about anything else. My axe is down there. I haven't got anything that I could... You can still do stuff, you know, if you could earn XP from something. Uh, could Marty get next to an obstacle to destroy it? One, two. Destroy that and get an XP. And for me, uh, with what I've taken, I don't think... Oh, I could do this. You know, move and jump and immobilize, and that comes up with an XP. So I could do that for an XP as well and try and get some coins and stuff. But... The, the big headline is, we have won. The conclusion, we are going to investigate uh, this place further and uh, unlock a new place and get a, a mana potion and stuff. So that is the end of scenario four. I hope this has given you a good idea of uh, another another scenario of Jaws of the Lion, but you know the, the, the full decks of uh, Hatchet and Demolitionist, at least in their level one state anyway. If you would like to see more... Gloomhaven, I did a full playthrough for the original Gloomhaven and for the prototype of Frosthaven, and I did scenario one of this if you'd like to see how it teaches uh, new players the game. If you'd like to know what I think about Jaws of the Lion, that's coming up sooner, it's in the description now, and if you would like to help me make more playthroughs, I have a Patreon, and your support would be massively appreciated there. Link's coming up on screen, and yeah, in, it's all in the description, again and again and again, I keep saying that, but uh, thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone. Bye.